Morning, mga igsoon, magbuntag sa tanan. Katong among i-kanta ganina, ititulahan to og Your Love Never Fails. Tinood yun nga ang gugma sa ginoo, way paglubad, o dili with malubad, bisan pa man sa taliwa sa ato ang i-atubang karun. Salamat sa ginoo, sa iyang kamayo sa itong kinabuhi. Salamat kay nagpadayon mo o tanaw sa ato ang mga devotionals every day. Thank you for subscribing even to my YouTube channel so that you would be notified, you would be updated of on the videos that I'm going to upload every day. So, we thank the Lord for this time that we can also worship Him as we are going to engage into His Word today. Yesterday, we were talking about Psalm chapter 11 and supposedly we're going to talk about Psalm chapter 12 right now. But I decided to skip again chapter 12 and move directly to chapter 12, 13 rather, so that we can have a different theme of what we have discussed or what we have been talking about uh, lately so far also and if you're going to look at psalm chapter 13 this is again a psalm of david and this um, was what i shared with the worship team yesterday sa ang bible study i'm going to share this with you also this morning so you grab your bibles and open it to psalm chapter 13 verses 1 up to 6 only six verses for this morning might be quite longer this time it's because um, there are there are so many good truths that we can't afford to miss in this passage. So let me read to you Psalm chapter 13, verses 1 to 6 from the ESV. It says here, The choir master, a Psalm of David, verse 1, How long, O Lord, will you forget me forever? <clears throat> How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? <clears throat> Consider and answer me, O Lord, my God, Light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. Verse 4, lest my enemies say I have prevailed over him, lest my, lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Lastly, verse 6, I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. 
May God bless the reading of His Word. Let's open our time in prayer. Lord, once again, we thank you for today. We thank you for giving us another day. Another lovely day, another beautiful day to worship your name. And indeed, you are indeed lovely, O God. You are indeed glorious, Lord. And we thank you for this gift of life that you have given to us. Lord, this gift of life is so amazing. It's something that we need to cherish and something that we need to treasure. Especially right now, Lord God, na daghanak kayong apiktuhan na virus. But Lord God, we still remain hopeful and we are rest assured of your word that whatever happens lord god you hold our lives you hold our um you hold everything in us lord god we are eternally secured in your hands lord thank you sa mong promise oh god nalangin ni meron lord sa mong pagtanaw sa mong pulong i pray that you would lead us all throughout the way may your name be glorified what you're going to do with your word this morning in the name of christ we pray amen and amen in this passage, again, this is the Psalm of David. Now, I don't know what was the specific uh, event of this Psalm. Previously, we've learned, in the previous Psalms, we've learned that David was being pursued by his enemies. One of them is, of course, his son Absalom. When Absalom, Absalom led a rebe rebellion against David. But in this Psalm, I'm quite unsure about the specific event of this Psalm. But this is also considered as a Psalm of Lament. No? And David was actually lamenting in this Psalm. Although the specific event is quite unsure, perhaps Bible scholars are, uh, perhaps they know what is the exact event of this, <coughs> of the time of writing, but I'm quite unsure kung sa ang background ani. But let me share with you three truths coming from the Word of God in Psalm chapter 13, verses 1 to 6. And to for the sake of alliteration, and this is what we are, or how we are trained to make sermons in the Bible school. It, your your sermon would look good, would sound good if the, the main points are outlined with one, alliteration. So, three Ps, tulog ka P, atong makita diri this morning. The first is the problem of David. That's the first P, the problem of David. What are the problems? Or what are the problems of David that we find in this passage? Now, let me read to you verse 1. It says, How long, O Lord? David begins this psalm by saying, How long, O Lord? Unsa kadugay, ginoo. No? If you are going to carefully study this passage, four times David repeated the phrase, how long. And there are four how longs in this passage. You know what? As we are going to study what did G uh, David mean about how long, it is actually an expression of his frustration. It's actually an expression of his frustration and discouragement towards what was going around him. And he says in verse 1, How long, O Lord? Will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? You know what? The problem of David at this time, specifically in verse 1, was that he felt like God was so distant from him. God seemed so distant from him. God seemed so far away from him. And God seemed so silent from his agony. God seemed so quiet from his suffering. And it seems like God was hiding his face from David. That's why he was able to say, how long will you hide your face from me? How long will you hide your face from me? He also says in verse 2, How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? The point is, David felt like the Lord left his side. He felt like the Lord was so silent. He felt like the Lord was leaving his side. It's all because the Lord was very silent. At, ta uh, at this time when David was calling upon his holy name. You know what, as we relate to the experience of David, perhaps there are some, at some point of your life, perhaps you have experienced that when you were in a deep trouble and you felt like the Lord was silent, the Lord was um, unattentive to your call, to your uh, cries, Perhaps nakasuway mo mga igsoon nga nay panghitabo sa inyong kinabuhi nga murag hilo mo kay Ginoo murag wala man siya imik murag wala man siya kibo sa akong sitwasyon and perhaps other people right now all across the world perhaps they felt like especially when they're being affected by the virus perhaps they felt like asa ang Ginoo why is God so silent about my cry why is God so silent about my suffering you know what this is what David experienced at this time and this was actually the problem that he faced other than that, other than the feeling that God seems so distant from him, we read in verse 2, he says, How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? The point is, David, since God, he, since he felt like God was so silent, he 
took over uh, he took over the situation he, he took over his situation and tried to control things you know what in this aspect in this regard right here there are times in our lives as well na kung dugay kayo mulihog ang ginoo we become so impatient there are times in our lives na kung makafeel ta nga silent man ang ginoo sa akong gipangayat sa iya ah di na ko kahuwat ako na lang buhaton kung unsa ang gidiktar sa kung kasing-kasing you know what when we feel like that when we experience things like that we are actually violating the will of God for our lives and there are times that we resolve to follow our own will our own desires when we feel like God is so silent about our requests and our pleas. The point is, let's not be like that. And let's remain patient to the Lord as He is going to fulfill His will in our lives. But David, he says, he was taking counsel of his own soul. He was listening to his own soul and that's, that's, that's how he solved his problem, right? And he also says, I have sorrow in my heart all the day. He was suffering from his sorrows. He was going through all pain. He was going through sufferings. Plus, What's, what's adding insult to this injury is on what verse 2 is saying. How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? He felt like his enemies were triumphing. He felt like his enemies were winning. And again, you can always expect him to question, well, why is it that the Lord is my shepherd? Why is it that God is my fortress, my refuge? Yet my enemies are winning over me and the Lord is so silent about or about my request or about my plea. David, this was what he went through in his life. And sometimes, perhaps most of the time, we can always relate to David with regards to the problem that he faced. The second main point is the prayer of David. So the first is the problem of David. Second is The second P is the prayer of David. What was the prayer of David? It says in verse 3, Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. When you look at the word consider in the original Hebrew language, it means to give regard or to give favor and care. To give favor, favor and care. In other words, David was asking God to give him favor and to show his care upon his situation. And I guess it's right when David said this thing. It's right when we also come to God in prayer and we ask Him, Lord, give me your favor, give me your care, let me experience, let me feel your care with regards to my situation. Mind us, David was going through a lot at this time, and I'm going to explain it why later on. But the point is, David was going through a lot of problems at this time. That's why he was able to ask the Lord, consider me, give favor to me, show your care and concern for me. And he says, and answer me, O Lord, my God. He was asking God, to show his favor upon his life. Secondly, we find also um, the, the, the words, light up my eyes. You know what? This is a metaphor. This is an allusion to the fact that David was experiencing intense exhaustion to the point of death. This is how Bible scholars explain this uh, phrase right here. Light up my eyes. And then he says, I, lest I sleep the sleep of death. The sleep of death is actually a metaphor for intense suffering and intense grief the point is david experienced intense suffering intense grief to the point of death if you're going to combine these two statements right here david experienced extreme or intense grief and sorrow and suffering that led to his exhaustion that led to his um to him be physically emotionally and his entire being to be exhausted to the point of death that's why we can always identify ourselves with David when we are also going the same problem. You know what, my friends? This is the best time for us to call upon our God and to ask Him to consider our situation and to answer us when we call upon Him. Uh, my friends, if you are calling out the attention of the government and you feel like the government isn't doing anything, well, let's call upon the name of our God. For sure, He will answer us and He will listen to our cries. That's why David prayed, consider and answer me. The problem of David, the prayer of David, how David solved his problem was through his prayer. And lastly, the last letter P is the praise. The praise, P-R-A-I-S-E, the praise of David. We find right here, David says in verse 5, But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Now listen to what I'm going to say because this is the highlight of my message this morning. The greatest challenge to our faith is on how, especially when we are in the face of crisis, 
is on how to turn our pain into our praise. Again, let me say that again. The greatest challenge of our faith in the midst or in the face of crisis is, to, is on how to turn our pain into praise. Turning your pain into praise. Again, it's so hard for us to do that. I mean, we are in a difficult situation. Wala na siguro kwarta ang uban na to, wala gay trabaho, di ba? Asa ta ipakaon sa tong pamilya niya atong mga silingan, siguro nakatakda na niya. Kita na lang ikamo na lang or kita na lang sa balay ang wala pa. Di ba? I mean, how can we turn that pain into praise? The point is, David was able to turn his pain into praise all because he understood the steadfast love of God. He says, I have trusted in your steadfast love. How do we experience the steadfast love of God? The point is, God shows us His steadfast love through the difficulties that we are facing. God shows us His steadfast love through the difficult situations that we face each and every day of our lives. David says in verse 6, I will sing to the Lord because He has dealt bountifully with me. Wow, He has dealt bountifully with me. This, was, this is all about God's providence. And God's providence is a, a lesson, a teaching, or a doctrine that tells us, it's a, it's a theological lesson that tells us that God is indeed working out His creation, that God is indeed involved in governing His creation, and through His providence, He shows to us that He really and truly cares for us. My friends, the fact that we are in this pandemic is one way to prove God's steadfast love for us. You may disagree with me, but having the right perspective about our situation would always be our game changer. If the purpose of God for this pandemic is for us to be developed and to be molded into becoming more and more like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I guess that is a proof of His, this is a proof of His steadfast love. My friends, as we go through our situation, as we go through this pandemic, let's turn our pain into praise. Can we do that? I hope you would say amen in your homes right now. But let's turn our pain into praise. At the end of the day, we can always thank the Lord for His faithfulness to our lives. And even if worse things would come to our way, even death would come to our way, well, our eternity is already secured. Death is temporal. Suffering is temporal. Let's not lose sight of the eternal glory that awaits us when our life here on earth is over. My friends, as I close this sermon, perhaps we can also identify with David when he said, How long? Kanos ama ni mahuman, Lord? Ang amo ang pandemi. Kanos ama ni mahuman ang mong suffering? I can't answer that question. I can also give you a clear answer of that question basing upon what the Word of God says. But the point is, let's not ask God. Let's not ask Him about how long would this end. We would never know. But the point is, while we are going through this pain, while we are going through this pandemic, let's turn our pain into praise. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for your word. Indeed, O oh God, we are going through a lot of pain, a lot of suffering, a lot of afflictions right now due to this pandemic. But Lord God, the greatest challenge to our faith is on how we can turn our pain into praise. Just like David, Lord, he was able to turn his pain into praise. He was able, able to say, that he trusts in your steadfast love and he will sing for the glory of your name all because he understood your will and your purpose and your righteousness in his life lord help us not to lose sight once again of the beautiful plan that you have laid through this pandemic help us lord not just for today but for the rest of our lives to transform our suffering to transform our pain into praise to transform our sufferings and to Lead us, lead us, Lord, into the sufficiency of Jesus Christ. We thank you and we give to our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray. Amen and amen. Magbuntag mga egsoon. Salamat kayo. God bless us all. See you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.